Bridge curve command in the curve tab drive curve group derived curve gallery creates a curve that bridges a gap between two selections. There are a few things you can select for the bridge in the start object and end object panes defined by the radio above the selection step. First, section can be either a curve or an edge, while object can be either a face or a point. The end object pane contains two additional selections, datum and vector. You can create a bridge curve between any combination of these. I'll first demonstrate bridging two curves. Pick the curve near the end of the desired continuity. I'll pick the first curve here. Select the next selection step and pick the second curve here. Several things display. First, this vector represents the side of the curve you are bridging. Double-clicking it defines the opposite end. This vector represents the start direction of the bridge curve. Double-clicking it reverses its direction. This vector represents the tangent magnitude. This corresponds to the method defined in the shape control pane and is a handle that you can drag. This is the same as using the slider in the dialog or entering a value. There are three other methods in the method dropdown. Changing this to depth and skew displays two different handles that you can modify. You can change the method by right-clicking a handle. Besides Conic, Template Curve is also available, for which you need to pick a curve as the template. I'll change it back to Tangent Magnitude. Finally, there are also handles at the ends of the bridge curve. These are the end constraints. The single bar above it indicates a G1 constraint. Expand the dialog and the connectivity pane to view these options. There is a tab for each end, and the drop-down defines a continuity constraint. There are two sub-panes that define the position and direction of the constraint. The direction is tangent to the start object, but you can also set this to perpendicular. The position is where on the start object to position the end constraint. You can define how to measure it with the location drop-down and enter a value. You can define the location method in continuity by right-clicking the handle then drag the handle to define the position so there is little reason to access this pane. I'll click OK to create the feature. I'll demonstrate a couple more examples of using the bridge curve command. In this first example, I'll pick the curve. For the end object, I'll activate object and pick the sheet body. Where you pick on the surface is the point that is used for the end point. You can drag this point anywhere on the surface. Another way of bridging to this sheet body is to select the edge. I'll deselect the sheet body, activate section, and pick the edge instead. I'll display another part file. This one has a datum axis and a datum plane. I'll pick the curve as the start object. Activate vector and pick the datum axis as the end object. There are a few things to note here. First, the start point defaulted to a G1 constraint, while the end point defaulted to a G2 constraint. In fact, the G1 position constraint is not available since a datum axis is infinite in length. In the shape control pane, there is no method drop-down. Only the depth and skew method is available with the sliders and handles displaying. I'll deselect the datum axis, activate datum, and pick the datum plane instead. 
Just as with the datum access, only the depth and skew method is available, and the endpoint defaults to G2, aligned with the normal of the datum plane.